Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rick Five One, and today I want to go over the newest captain's log for Alice, which is Captain's Log Twenty Three, setting a course. We've seen some interesting action over the past week. Whilst Anarchy rules, players have found imaginative ways to entertain themselves within this no holds barred meta whilst we gather useful information for the future meanwhile the team has had in-depth discussions regarding the upcoming patch with some specific focus on claim and war systems there will be some adjustments to our previously announced plans and this captain's dog will outline the details that have emerged during this process the specifics will be honed and adapted as we approach the ptr as well as the launch of these new systems so mega or March Mega Patch update. Um, I don't think anything has changed on here. I think this is the same graphic. If you didn't have a chance to read our previous captain's log, please do so. So that's just from the previous one. General claim changes. We make some general changes to the system, which will impact both PVE and PVP servers. The boat DK system will be enabled. This means that there will be a tagging system attached to boats, which will cause them to self-destruct after multiple weeks of inactivity on PVE, Golden Age Rune, and Freeport servers. To tag a boat, the owner of that boat, single player or company, will just need to enter its stasis slash render distance. So it's basically a um, time DK instead of a over, instead of just a health DK. So basically, it'll get destroyed if you're not in a certain radius of it for a certain amount of time. Instead of, say, the system that's going to be on lawless servers for buildings um, that even if you're by it, it will still be decaying health over time. Claim owners will be able to demolish structures via the pinwheel on their sediments temporarily as long as the structure has been placed within the 12 hours. After the 12 hour period has passed, they will not be able to demolish a structure using the pinwheel and will have to manually destroy it. Claim owners can do this outside of raid hours or warlike. This exists as an anti-griefing mechanism on PV servers. We may extend the time beyond 12 hours as players will not have the option to destroy via PvP. So basically what they're doing here is if you're the owner of a settlement, you'll be able to demolish people's buildings that are building on your island. Now you own the island if you're the settlement owner within 12 hours. So if they play something within 12 hours, you can use the pinwheel and go demolish it. Now if it's past that 12 hours, you'll have to go damage it to destroy it. Um, and you can do this outside of raid hours or war like um, without them being able to attack you back but at raid hours or warlike you should be able to still attack them but they can attack you back um unless they disable anything that actually wouldn't make sense they kind of said it a bit weird but um you'll still be able to destroy it basically whenever you want past the 12 hours you just have to blow it up yourself instead of just demolishing it via the wheel um now they talk about it on pve even though there wasn't going to be a claim system on pve and i think they kind of go through this below this there will be a notice sent to the settlement's owner's company and also via a cross server notification pop-up when new players slash companies are building on their territory players will have the option to subscribe to this company log via email or discord similar to other company log messages so basically if someone's building on your company's settlement or owned island you can get you'll get a notification game and you can subscribe to get that notification through email or discord as well with our new system that's going to have more stuff in that PVE claim changes. We received an extensive amount of feedback from the PVE community regarding our upcoming changes. The overwhelmingly clear message was a desire to retain some form of the claiming system. One aspect of the design we tend to stick to is the fact that we want players to always have an option to build, otherwise the game cannot be truly experienced in its current state. We understand that there are some concerns regarding how that could potentially be exploited in a PvE environment, and we're working on designs and systems to ensure that this isn't the case from a technical point of view, as well as through GM involvement. With the Mega March update, the claim system on PvE will change from being lawless-esque service to the following. Use the same claim system as PvE. So the claim system that will be in PvE is one claim flag per island. If you 
um, take that claim flag, you're the settlement owner of the island, and there's no other claim flags besides that. But remove the rateable hours and war aspect, so there's no nine hour rateable window, and there's no um, tokens to cause war on that island. This means that players will be able to claim islands and anyone can build on those settlements. Each settlement will have an upkeep cost which is based on a variety of factors such as the island's rankings, the number of settlements that company has and how many different companies are building on that settlement. Settlement owners will be able to set a tax rate and also players will be able to place their player run shops on the claim island. So basically they're making it the exact same as PvP just there's no PvP or activatable wars for that island. However, we are planning some PvE-specific changes. We'll be imposing a hard limit of claim points equivalent to one small island for single players. Um, so I'm wondering how this is going to be done. Um, now, one island for single players I think is completely fine. Single players shouldn't be able to have more than one small island. And I assume that would be a rank one island. Um, companies will be able to own multiple settlements, but there will be a hard limit lower than PvP and it will be based on island points and the number of players who are currently in that company. This means that larger companies will have access to more claim points and are therefore able to settle on more islands with higher rankings. However, we will still be imposing a relatively low cap. So basically companies will have multiple islands they can own and that will go up with how many people they have in their company which is up to 250 but that will be a low cap i'm assuming probably something like five or probably five maximum 10 but i assume not 10 probably lower than 10 um, for a max out company company alliances will no longer be enabled on pve servers we understand that there are some legitimate use cases however in the sandbox environment we believe that they will primarily primarily be used to gain the system and get past company rules slash limitations. We recognize that this may impact how trading communication takes place on PvE servers, and we are looking in, into alternative options for players. So basically, there's no more alliances on PvE, which makes sense. Um, if there was the other systems that they're talking about adding, and that is... They're probably going to be adding like trade channels or general channels or stuff like that or maybe um, groups you can join that aren't alliances but you can join like text groups or something like that like trading groups to be able to trade um, and talk to each other through a different chat channel without actually being in an alliance to try to prevent um, basically gaming or exploiting the alliance systems to be able to own more stuff pvp claim changes we'll also be adding some new options along with changing how cannons are used during raidable slash wartime hours give claim owners the option to enable allied companies to build cannons on their lands so basically if it before, if it was anyone besides the settlement owners building on that island, they could not build cannons until it was wartime or raidable hours. So basically, they couldn't build them before. If it was full PvP enabled on the island, they could build cannons, but they would be deactivated when that time was over. So now there's an option to allow allied companies who build on your island to be able to build cannons whenever they want. Give company owners the option to allow allies to use their cannon government settings. So basically, this is allowing one company to give their allies the ability to use their cannons so basically say you're in a company and you're allied with one other company you can give that other company the option um to use your cannons um so basically that would help with defenses when you already have everything set up um say if someone's attacking your island or say um someone started a war on your island you could have a bunch of allies that you're allied with come to your island and use your defenses they're just saying cannons but i'm wondering if it's any other mountable weapons enable an activation timer on cannon structures placed on non-ally companies placed by non-ally companies during wartime and rateable hours to prevent instant fobs similar to battery powered heavy turret activation timer on arc so basically if someone places if it's someone outside of your company or the island's owner um, company if you place down cannons so they're just saying cannons i'm assuming these are all mounted weapons 
because placing if you could just get around this by placing a mortar instead of a cannon it wouldn't make sense so i'm assuming this is all mountable weapons um they have an activation time um i think on arc it's 30 seconds when you place a turret to activate it but basically once they place something they'll have to wait a certain amount of time before they can get on it and use it to prevent instant fobs so basically from preventing them just placing it and then instantly using it. Um, now, if you play something, you have to have a certain amount of time before it activates to give defenders time to counterattack or try to destroy that cannon or whatever they just placed. Delay in joining a new company or alliance after leaving one for 24 hours. So if you leave a company or alliance, you have to wait an entire day before you can join a new one. This... Um, Definitely helps with a lot of exploiting and gaming the system. Company owners and admins can now set other companies as neutral. This is done via the in-game pinwheel similar to alliances when targeting another company's structure or player. Companies which are marked as neutral will have different color display HUD um, as a way for players to indicate they are non-hostile. However, they will not have other benefits which the alliance system would provide in summary. There will now be three states in which other companies can appear. Ally, neutral, or enemy. So basically, um, you can set um, other companies as being neutral, ally, or enemy. So basically, allied, you have to ally. There's the limits to that. They're the allies we have now, which will be teal. Um, did it say the color they will be set to? Um, I assume they're going to be some other color for neutral, which is basically they're not your they're not allied, but they're not aggressive to you, and then enemies will be red. We acknowledge that there have been a lot of feedback regarding alliance limitations, how they impact mid-sized companies, along with the role they play when sharing territory. This is something we're currently discussing and may have an update for you closer to the time of the patch. So I'm pretty sure I'm getting the numbers right here, but you can only have I know you can only have 250 in your company with this update. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's two alliances with four companies in each alliance, if I'm not mistaken. And that's a max you can have. Player to player secure trading system. So this is new stuff they're adding. The update will also include our first phase of the player to player secure trading system. We regard this as an important aspect of the game alongside our player and shops, which you'll be able to experience later in this month, later this month on the PTR. Um, we don't actually know what this is. Um, I assume this is something like if you've ever played WoW, you can up open up a trade with somebody and you place the items you want in like a window. There's maybe you could have a separate section where you can type in how much gold or you could just type in how much resources you can place it in there. And then you have to click accept. The other person can put whatever they want in there and they have to click accept as well. And then once you both have clicked it, have clicked accept it trades the items to each other i assume this is probably something they're meaning with this most likely and while you have to be right next to the person um we don't know if it's going to be right next to the person or if you'll be able to do it across or in bigger areas because i assume in a game like this they would most likely need to enable it to be in larger areas unless they just want you going to like free ports and doing this procedurally generated shipwrecks this march mega update will also be introducing a new environmental objective for players to explore whilst at sea procedurally generated shipwrecks exist as a new source of loot for items and blueprints you'll be able to find them randomly populating throughout the sea floor with a higher density present around the underwater trench you can find them by diving deep into the ocean or looking out for their visual indicator on the surface of the water or su successfully completing the sextant minigame which will point you in a direction of nearby shipwrecks procedurally generated or player made we have we will have various types with our own unique looks players will need to swim into them to locate the chest to loot which will vary based on the shipwreck the uh, structural place places or pieces planks will not be able to be harvested and the submarine can just directly attack the shipwreck to harvest the loot once a chest inside the wreck has been activated it will begin a timer which will destroy the wreck additionally looting it entirely will also cause the wreck to be destroyed please keep in mind that this is our initial impl implementation for these procedurally generated shipwrecks and we'll be expanding on them in the future as 
it was introducing more PvE content for players to explore and experience. So this is a very good addition, in my opinion, to the game. This is something we actually thought we were going to get when the game was just being shown in trailers and they were giving us some um, like information. Because it made sense just to have random sh shipwrecks out there that you could go loot and get random loot from. And this is a very good addition because it gives more opportunities to give loot, um, more opportunities to just go around and explore the map to try to get more stuff if the loot's actually good, um, and just more stuff to do outside of PvP, more ways to get loot, more incentive to go explore the map, more incentive to use the sex and minigame, and all in all, a pretty good system, and hopefully they will keep adding new stuff like this. Um, this will also make the game feel more like alive and more living because it's not so empty outside of anything players have made, um, especially out at sea. Public Test Realm Test Live. This update, including the worst system and claim changes, will be making its way to our public test realm before it hits the official network and will be accessible for our players for both pvp and pve it is anticipated that this test live will be available to play around the 20th of march and will keep you posted should there be any updates as the time approaches we appreciate all the feedback you've shared regardless regarding the update and will continue to work on improving the systems and the game by incorporating aspects of that feedback into our existing development pipelines as well as our vision for the game so basically the ptr um or test live i guess what they're talking about, which is a weird name will be available on the 20th of march which means that they've said it would be a week before so basically at the very end of march possibly the last day of march um probably a few days before the last day of march if it all goes to plan um the march update will be live so the very end of march it'll be officially there um if they can stick with their timeline and on the 20th, you'll be able to test it out on the live or the uh, PTR upcoming major version. We'll also be releasing a major version update on the 8th of March, which was yesterday. Technically it's 5:30 in the morning right now on the 9th, which will contain a massive overhaul to the way items are replicated on our networks. This should result in a considerable performance gain and reduction in bandwidth on servers and do to the scale and necessity of the changes, a major update will be required. Additionally, we'll, we will be rolling out the peg leg and hook hand cosmetics, which can be acquired in your nearest free port. So it's not the skin it's showing. It's actually just the peg leg right there and the hook hand. Um, also, the peg leg and the hook hand, you can't have two um, legs or hands at the same time, but you can have... Um, each side separately so you could have the left leg right arm left leg left arm whatever you want um, and that's pretty much it I don't think I could scroll down because I'm pretty sure there's a nipple on this um, I guess drawn art and I don't exactly know if that's technically allowed on YouTube so I'm not going to scroll down to the art and stuff um, so that's pretty much it some new updates it seems like they are very um very keen on getting this update to be exactly what players want and a very good update to bring a lot of players back, which is definitely what it needed with some more new additional content coming out. Hopefully, if this patch um, does, you know, put the game in a good state and most players um, consider it to be a good state for the game to be in balance wise, at least overall, like major balance wise. Hopefully that will allow the developers and everything at Grapeshot to focus more on adding new content to the game. Um, with the game being decently balanced, they could add content a lot quicker um, and give us a lot more new stuff to do. Um, because most likely the game right now is not even relatively close to how much systems or um, major game content they actually want in the game. Even just the amount of stuff we're getting with this um, there's a decent bit of new content and most likely a few months from now or a year from now, the game will look completely different in terms of the actual content that we're able to play. So subscribe if you want to see more Atlas content. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you think about Atlas as a whole, what you think about the 
direction they're going with the Mega March update, which you think about the changes that they've outlined in this new captain's log. And thanks for watching.